All right, good morning. Um, we are here together today for an industry update. My name is Nicole Jensen. I am the CEO of Real MLS. I have been here since August, so I'm no longer new, which is good. <laughs> um, so I'm just thrilled to be here this morning. We're gonna go over some really good stuff, I hope. I hope you find it valuable. I am going to hit on a lot of topics. So don't fear, we are recording this webinar and we will make sure to share it out so that you can share it with other agents that weren't able to attend, but that, but don't leave us just because we're recording it. So, all right, let's get started. Um, we have for you today, um, the beginning of, if my slides will advance, come on slides, maybe. Of course it, it has to do something, there we go, yay. Um, our, our market our market stats i really just wanted to start with a snapshot these are really cool infographics that we're putting out and they're available for you to use and share as you wish um, they're a member benefit and it's just a really quick glimpse um, graphic image of our market it shows the what we all know as the monthly inventory of being very low but it also is really valuable just a quick snapshot of the marketplace and we publish these every month and it's at realmls.com under resources and then you'll find market stats there and we have three different things available so be sure to check it out and use them willingly so today we're going to cover all of these things which um it's quite a bit and i don't mean to overwhelm or anything but we've been busy here <laughs> for the last six months and so i'm really excited just to get to share everything with the membership of what we've been doing um, to work hard for you our members so this is the CEO report that I actually put out for the board of directors every month, and we can share it out to you guys too. But we're gonna cover um, some new products that we're adding to our services, Crexy, Flow Plan, and Rental Beast. And then we're going to talk about a new campaign that we want you to all share with your clients to tell everyone about how important the MLS is. Um, we really have never talked to the public about that. So this is a, a first for the MLS industry to cross over and ask you to tell your, your clients what we do. Um, and then we're gonna talk about a few things that we're hoping to do into the near future, um, build a dashboard and such. And then I'll end it with an industry-wide update, like a national, uh, you know, a national update and an industry-wide MLS update. So here we go. When I got here, the very first thing I did was I said, let's let's ask the members what is important to them. And hopefully some of you took this, this, um, this survey for us. Obviously we had, I think over 300 people or something like that participate, which is um, statistically relevant. But we said to you, what do you want from an MLS? What can we do to help you? And these were the results we asked, would you like a commercial platform? And you said, yes, 79% of you. Rental platform, 87% said, yes, that would help me in my business. And would you be interested if we helped you um, provide floor plans? And you said, absolutely. So based on these survey results, asking our membership, this is how we make decisions, right? We don't just decide for ourselves that we think it's a good idea. We wanna know that you guys agree with us before we look into anything. So new services coming to you and already delivered. Um, Crexy, the Crexy platform went live on February 2nd. We're excited about it. They're an NAR partner. It's a commercial real estate platform that helps you market your commercial properties out into the world. It is free for your listings to exist there. So make sure to check it out. And I'm gonna go into e detail on each of these as well. Floor plans, we're adding flow plan from FBS. And we're super excited about that. There's a survey that was out that um, said, what, what would be the next thing that clients would want? And number three is floor plans. So we're bringing that to you at a highly discounted rate. Um, rental Beast is for your rentals to be able to help you in that market area, because that's one, you know, there's this huge market, um, you know, area of rentals, and we really are not represented there. We only at the time, I think, have 750 rental properties. So we really want to empower you in that marketplace. Um, and then the MLS value consumer campaign of in the know. And if you've gotten an email from any from us here at MLS or um, and even on Facebook, we're trying to share that out and make people aware of that campaign that was provided to us for CMLS. And again, it's free for you to use. And then a single sign-on dashboard, which I really think is gonna be a game changer, which will be a place for you to start your day um, every day and see all of the services that we bring to you because we're more than just the FBS at Flex MLS system. We have a number of tools that we really want you to leverage and help your clients. So Crexy, 
is the first thing that I want to highlight, and it is a real estate active marketplace for commercial properties. It stands for Commercial Real Estate Exchange. Um, like I said, we partnered with them as an MLS, and so we have a feed going up to Crexy.com that you can, um, in, in the broker distribution channel, you'll see a, a, a check mark for Crexy, and it is, our, it is defaulted to yes. So by default, your listings are going to go to Crexy.com. If you don't want your listing to go to Crexy, you can go in and remove that check mark, and, it, and we'll take it down from there. And then they, of course, have a premium pro version that we want you to check out. Um, it is at, at this website, um, go it, there, it's there, we'll post it again, but go.crexy.com slash partnerships dash real MLS. Um, so it is a good thing for commercial properties and it's an important thing for you all to look into, especially if you have any commercial clients. You don't have to sign up for pro, but it is there for you if you wish to um, sign up for the pro version. My slides are lagging just a little bit again. I don't know what I do there. Oh, okay. So this is the uh, button under broker listing distribution options. It says Crexy, and that is how you get your listing for free up to the Crexy website. And then there's a lot of different, um, you can do, um, you know, highlight your listing, but you do, you will get leads off of it with or without the pro version. So go check it out and they will get back to you on details with that. The next thing is flow plan, and I am, I don't know, I'm super excited about this, you guys. We um, have basically subsidized the price of flow plan for everyone, for all of you, all of our members, down from $29 per, per, per floor plan, um, down to 12. So for 12 bucks with your cell phone, you can scan, walk through a house. It's very easy. I've done it walk through a house, upload your scans, and within 24 business hours, they will give you a full floor plan of your listings. So you must try it. Um, it goes live March 15th. So we're just a few days away from that launch. Right now you can do a floor plan using flow plan, but it is the $29 until March 15th. And on that date, um, you will be allowed to have that discounted price until the end of time, 12 bucks, you guys. Um, so be sure to use, use, use that. It, it, we are having a launch party, which is gonna be a lot of fun on March 19th, mark your calendars. Um, it'll be again in social media, but March 19th at 11 a.m. And they're going to be giving away some free scans and such. So be sure to um, check it out and join the party. It'll be fun. So this is what I was talking about. The, they asked, FBS asked, like, what's important to you? And it's the NAR home buyer and seller generations trend showed that floor plans are number three, whereas listing content is concerned. Um, so use this tool. People want to see how a, how a house flows. Um, because they they do not want to, maybe they aren't here, maybe they can't walk through it. And it's important to see the floor, flow of the house um, when you're not able to visit it in person. So um, I'll do a quick slide. There we go. So this is sort of how it works. You walk through the house and you point your cell phone camera at the baseboards of each room as you just pass through the property and then you hit upload. And like I said, 24 hours later, you have a floor plan of your house, your listing. So it's amazing technology and we all need to leverage it. Use it, use it, use it, okay? Enough on that. <laughs> I'm pretty, you can tell I'm excited, right? Uh, so next is Rental Beast, and Rental Beast is an interesting platform and it's really for um, Realtors, it is built for them. It's an MLS for for rental properties, if you will, um, for lack of a better term. But it is a, um, a again another platform that's on online that will allow people to search your your rental listings. But it is also much more than that. It does um, lead generation. You can see the the screenshot of the platform there. Um, this is in the works. We're almost to the end of um, ready to sign a contract with them. So it is something that's coming to you soon. It'll probably take us 60 days to onboard with them because they actually come into our marketplace and research it and make sure that they have comprehensive um, rental property listings in the area. So we are... Um, Again, super excited about it. Um, there will be an apply now button that will be integrated into the MLS system. And so that will be for your use. If you own rentals, 
and you're currently using another service um, for the application process, that's fine. You don't need to use it, but we would love for you to use the Apply Now button. Um, it's super streamlined. It's an easy process. It runs them through all of the things that, you know, the credit reporting, the background check, all of that. Um, and it's super simple. I think it's $49 is all that is um, per application. So. Um, watch for that. You will hear far more about the Rental Beast integration um, very soon, I'm sure. So we're hoping to get that rolled out by the, you know, this summer, by June, so that you can have it for your busy rental season. Okay, we're moving right along. Um, In the Know campaign is a new campaign that the Council of Multiple Listing Service provided every MLS that's a member of them. And we, of course, are, we, we believe highly in the Council of MLS just because of the what they do for our industry as an MLS. Um, I have my CMLX3 designation and you all, if you wish, could go get a CMLX V, which is for volunteer. That's their designation program. Um, it really teaches you a, a lot. It gets really granular with the MLS and it is amazing. So check that out. But this In the No campaign is the first time that the MLS industry has really crossed the line from only talking to our members to providing you assets to speak to your consumers about the importance of what the MLS does for you. That it's a it's a platform that is a cooperative that, that lifts all of us up, right? Without it, um, we, we I guess I, it's important for everyone to understand that not every country has an MLS. And so we're very lucky here in the United States to all be com- competitors who cooperate um, and it leverages all of that value. So there is a seller's platform for the in the no campaign and there's a buyer's in the no campaign because as you all know, the MLS benefits both sides of the transaction. Um, so please share this. It's on our page. It has its very own tab um, at realmls.com. On the far left, it says in the know. And all of these assets, there are videos, flyers, um, words to use on your website, on social media, all those things. Um, so please use that because it is a great campaign. And as everyone knows, our industry is really um being challenged, if you will. And so if we can communicate the the value of the multiple listing service to our consumers, we are far better off um, if they than when they don't understand it. Some of them believe that when they hear MLS, it's the soccer, um, of course, but educate your clients because you guys are a part of a cooperative and you need to let them know why that's important to them. So All right, next we have a dashboard. So this is actually on our website now, but it doesn't actually link to each of the property or to each of the services. So we got with Glenn at NEFAR and Salida, and we've decided to come together and build a dashboard for your use so that you will have a place to start your day and you will see the NEFAR services and NAR, the National Association of Realtor Services and and then this real MLS family of services so that you can like remember, oh, I forgot we have my condo plans. I'm going to go list a condo. Let me check that out um, so that they're in front of you. Because I feel like sometimes we forget all of the different services. We have so many things that we offer that I feel like putting them on a dashboard that you'll be able to do a one click. And, and we do have this now in the MLS under the menu. So it's not as if we don't have these SSO links built, but they're just not all there graphically displayed for your for your use. And so um, that is we we decided that that is a great value. And the and the best part is is that it'll be really clear on who you owe money to if you if you have an invoice out with the MLS maybe this summer when we do billing or I think NEFAR just got done with their billing that they do in December, January, that you'll have clarity on who that is because both of our invoices will be displayed on the same page. And you'll be able to say, oh, that's MLS that I owe. Okay, now that makes sense. Um, So just trying to bring that clarity so that it's not so, I know that it can be confusing to navigate all of the different services and member benefits that you have with NEFAR and with Real MLS. So. Um, that's exciting. It's in development, in the works, and it will hopefully be coming to a, a URL near you real soon. <laughs> um, I wanted to cover these just because we have, we're trying to do a lot of work with the fields, which sort of starts to become 
a little ominous, but what we're trying to do with MLS um, fields is really try to make them ser more searchable with the data shares that we have with other MLSs in the area so that you guys can search more easily. So we fixed a little bit in the pool area to try to align with those data shares. Um, you know, I know number of stories, I, a lot of these things I think got a little bit convoluted when we um, did a condo conversion a while back. And so we're just trying to do a little cleanup. So we hope that you appreciate those. Um, the last one in this list is probably the most important thing that I'm going to talk about, about these approved field changes. And that is we changed the title. Literally, it was just a label um, that said, it said report a violation. And we learned that people were scared, that they didn't want to violate. They didn't want to report a violation on another realtor because they're friends with that realtor. They, are, they work alongside with them all the time. So we didn't want you to think of it negatively. So we actually changed it just to report error because it's really not about the violation. We don't want violations to happen. We don't want... Um, you to feel like you're you're tattling on someone. We want to know about the error because what we want is, and all we want is good data. And that is what we're after. And we want you to use the report error button because on each listing, if you see something and you're like, that is not 2,400 square foot or whatever it is. I mean, it could be anything under the sun. Click on that report error button and let us know because we're not going to like we're not going to slam them with a fine. Just to be clear, we are going to reach out to them, make them aware of the error. And 90 percent of people, 99 say, oh, my God, thank you for letting us know. Thank you for letting me know. And I will go in and fix that. And boom, we're done. Like there is no more. We don't find people. We, we're not punitive. This is not the idea. The idea is to have the best data for you and your clients. So please, please, please use that report error button and let us know when you see that anything that's awry in an in a MLS listing content. So these were shared out, but I just wanted to highlight on them. Uh, Kimberly and the MLS Technology Committee do amazing work. They are, it's very thoughtful and the board of directors as well. It's very thoughtful process. These changes are not staff driven. They are, they, we discuss them at length um, good to the good work of those committee members that are so committed that give the, our ta their time to go over these different changes that will improve the data in the MLS system. All right, and then some of you, um, it's it's not clicking again. These are technological challenges. There it is. Um, have been receiving this new email campaign. It's called the Real Deal. A little kitschy title there. Um, but it's a broker, a managing broker publication. So we have tried to determine the who, you know, we use the MLS system and say, okay, here's our set of managing brokers. If there's somebody that's not receiving this, there's a couple of different possibilities. That is that we don't have you in as a, as a managing broker, or you might have unsubscribed. And so I am going to make one ploy today. I'm going to beg everyone that if you're not receiving emails from us, we have this one, which is the real deal. And then we have this uh, news and updates that goes out to everybody. Okay. Um, and so if you're not receiving these, I need you to get a hold of us. Or if you're realtors, if you're a managing broker and your members are not receiving these updates. So I'm going to go back one slide. This one is for the managing brokers and this is for everyone. And we usually try to tell managing brokers a little bit different content because the message to them might differ from what we might want to tell the realtors. But if you're not receiving these, please reach out to services at realmls.com and let us know because we likely, <clears throat> um, you may be on a unsubscribe list and we can send you a link that says, Click here to resubscribe. So please, please, please. We it's we have a lot of important things. We're not just you know being. I, I just I want you to be engaged. And if if you're not receiving comms from us, then it's really hard for us to to keep that level of engagement up. So please let us know. Services at realmls.com and say I'm not receiving your emails, and then we'll get you a link that'll let you resubscribe. Or maybe we have a b bad email. You know, there's a lot of different possibilities. But um, we even have a new president's message, which is a video. Carol Zingoni is being amazing and recording a, an update for you guys every month that are that are going to go out in these emails as well. So we're just really trying to. Um, up our game and, and and just keep that member engagement up so that you know what we do here. Quick drink.
half time. Okay. Um, moving forward, <clears throat> this is an idea that I had. I <clears throat> I said, um, have, have we ever thought about an actual like university or a designation for MLS? Because you have them for a lot of things. You can go get your GRI, have the CMLX, all of the different things. But this is actually would be like a path that you could take that would take you through like a real MLS university that would make you, and then we would give you a designation. And so this is something that's in the infancy. Um, it'll probably be, you know, third quarter before you, we see it. But I, I went out to brokers when I first got here. I'm like, how am I going to engage these brokers and, and members? Because it, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so I can't have a, a big uh, fanfare in the education center. So I reached out to the managing brokers and said, if you'd like to schedule a meeting with me, I'm happy to do so. And I did, I, I've met with some amazing people um, in person and virtually. And all I kept hearing, this it just kept coming up, kept coming up, is that we need to increase the level of education and the level of professionalism in our industry. And I know you guys have a hundred different ways to do that, but I thought, well, maybe, maybe there are people out there that would really like to become proficient and really an expert in the MLS arena and all the different tools that we add. Um, so we have, we're going to have a buyer's tract, a seller's tract, and then an advanced, you know, session. And at the end of it, after you do all of these things, um, and it's going to be organic, it'll be about the transaction, right? We're not going to just go in and say, here's a CMA tool or here's the MMT tax tool. We're going to actually have it be, you know, a story about how you how you navigate a transaction using all of these tools that we provide you for the one that you know mls fee that you pay um, and at the end of it if you complete all four modules then you will become uh, real mls certified and you'll be able to say i am certified in all things technology at the that the mls offers so we are excited about it um, watch for more on it but i just think that it's another great opportunity to provide you value and tell you about the tools that we provide um, for you to be able to better help your clients again that's always our um, that is where i start every day i think about how can we as an organization as a technology organization provide tools for you to be able to better help your clients find a house or rental commercial whatever it is um, so that is sort of the um, the baseline, I guess, if you will, is, is how we make decisions or where we go. So that is, I think that brings us to the end of our real MLS update. And we are at like 24 minutes. So the next part's going to have to be really quick. Um, does anybody have any questions? I think Jeremy is doing, um, helping with questions. So you can type them in the questions box. And, and we can also get back to you later, but I'm going to keep going just for the sake of time because I don't want to lose any of you. We're holding strong at a full capacity here, so this is exciting. All right, so um, with the industry update, we're going to start with the it, fun stuff, NAR DOJ settlement. Um, it is still in not the final days. It, it, there's been no settlement of sorts, but these are the four things that NAR is sharing with us that will be included in a comprehensive rule set that is coming out of the NAR DOJ settlement. So they are the offer of compensation must be disclosed. So that is actually um, on us as an MLS. That one is not um, something that really has to concern you, but rather we as MLS organizations will add the offer of compensation that you offer the competitor that you cooperate with. Well, we're gonna start showing that field, but we're not gonna do that until the DOJ and NAR come up with the actual rule set that tells us exactly where that needs to be. So that's what we're waiting on. And that's why we haven't moved off center on this whole entire settlement. But that it's gonna, the, the um, onus is gonna be on us. We're gonna be the ones that put that, that offer of compensation where it needs to be for you to fulfill your duty in the settlement language. Um, so you will have the offer of compensation on uh, consumer facing reports that you pull out of the MLS and consumer facing sites. Um, they will, it'll have to display there. The real estate, the second one, uh, real estate transaction services must not be advertised as free. And so this is just to, I really bring transparency and clarity to the consumer that, I mean, we all know nothing's free, right? 
So you just can't say those words. You can't say free CMA, free this. Um, you can do it any other way. Just don't, you can't advertise it as free. You know, say value added, whatever else you wanna say, but just the word free will eventually not be something that we can use when we're describing transaction services. Um, and then the MLS listings may not be filtered based on commission, amount, or name of listing broker or agent. So this one, um, really, I think it's a no-brainer. I feel like you should be providing all listings to every consumer for so many reasons that I can't, you know, I could do a whole hour on why that's important. And I don't think that really we should have ever been searching on the amount of money I'm going to make if they buy a, pro a certain property. So... I, sorry, I agree with this one, um, but I just think that when we when it comes to a pro-consumer environment, which is what we all need to be providing, um, this one is a, a no-brainer that we need to not filter who what houses we're showing based on the amount of co compensation that we're going to be offered. Uh, I'm all about everybody doing well, but this is sort of a transparency and clarity item for consumers, and I'm always going to be pro-consumer. And then finally, lockboxes, the access must be available to all licensed um, all licensed professionals. So if they're not a member of NEFAR or they're an MLS only member or a Thompson broker or whatever the case may be, um, we have to provide them lockbox access. So this does not mean uh, free for all, have it at it, here you go, here's a key, go show houses tomorrow. It's going to be a process that they're going to have to execute a lockbox agreement. The, the, these slides are directly from NAR. So um, they're gonna be able to be subject to the same security precautions, background checks, if we run background checks, whatever it is we're doing, for our members, they can be held, or to our affiliates, if you will, like whoever has lockbox access, um, which is an EFAR service, um, they will be subject to those same standards, right? And they will pay a reasonable amount for lockbox access, just like y'all do. So it's really, again, a pro-consumer move. They feel that access to the properties the DOJ feels should be opened up regardless. Um, which is, you know, we could debate it, but it is a part of the settlement. And so NIFAR will work hard to execute that as, again, um, we are waiting for final clarity and final wording for those rule sets um, um, before we go live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a question here uh, from Carol. It says, on lockbox access, how does that apply when other areas may have their own lockboxes? So everybody has, I mean, right now we have that same, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but right now we have the same um, situation that everybody has their own lockbox system. If you are a member of us, we do have reciprocal, um, you know, reciprocal access with some that have the Supra system. And again, uh, lockboxes are a service of NIFAR and not the MLS. I'm more so mentioning it from an NAR DOJ settlement standpoint. So I'm not exactly certain what is needed for you to be able to, you can't just go down to wherever we, as super box hangs and access it. I'm certain that you have to make sure that they turn on your reciprocation, um, but it, it, we separate, we reciprocate with super boxes. Again, there are probably, I know one, at least one area that has central lock boxes and clearly I don't know if there's one day codes there available, um, but you can sure, I'm sure contact NEFAR and get details on um, accessing boxes in different service areas of different MLSs. Hope that, I hope that helps. <laughs> I'm not super helpful in the lockbox uh, area. Is one, that good? One one more question. Uh, uh, when you were talking about uh, searching by listing uh, uh, compensation or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. it says, do, does this mean that uh, the system won't allow us to search by um, agent name? You can search by agent name. Yeah, you will still be able to. The idea is, is that you shouldn't I, I, you won't be able to search by compensation. You'll be able to search by agent name or company name, but the idea is that you shouldn't withhold certain listings due to the particular listing brokerage. So the onus is on the broker show, the you know, the buyer's agent saying like, I'm not going to choose not to show. Um, and so if there ever would be cause, they could determine you know, whether or not you are comprehensive in providing the listing set to your consumer. So I just am, I, we're not going to turn that field off. No, 
I, I don't believe that the unless NAR says you need to turn that field off again, we're waiting for guidance from them because until I have that final guidance, I really don't know what all of this will exactly look like. And I will promise that either NAR will do a, a great, they did an amazing video, which is where I took the, I borrowed these slides from. Um, they have a great video that uh, one of the attorneys from NAR goes over this thing line by line. But again, like the actual wording is, is really what we need to be able to be more clear on all of this. So it's very close. Um, I would say that within the next month, we'll probably see that. We are at 1031 and we promised a half an hour, I think. And so we're gonna go over just a hair. I'm gonna move on. And like I said, we can talk more and I can do even another webinar or have somebody else get on and do a great webinar about the settlement. All right, um, this one, I just wanted to mention it because I know a lot of you are a bit frustrated and we're saying, where are you, real MLS? Why are you not talking to us about these acquisitions? We need you, and we're, you know, it's it was fear. Um, there was a lot of fear, especially with the second one when Showing Time was um, is being acquired. Um, I don't believe that the transaction has been complete, but there was a lot of fear in the Showing Time to Zillow Group transaction um, that was recently announced. And I just wanted to say, and I'm going to be very brief on this, and I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole. But I just wanted you to know that MLS, we had um, extremely thoughtful conversations at the board of directors meeting last month. We did all of our due diligence in um, doing contract review to make sure what the terms of our contracts were with these groups. Um, did it change with acquisition? Um, all of those things. We have, Kimberly and I literally have showing software uh, review fatigue because we have we have looked at so many different showing services, um, really with the with the goal in mind to give you to give you choices, to have the board of directors be super educated in the environment of showing services. Um, and really with HomeSnap, the same thing. Should we continue our partnership with HomeSnap? Should we continue our partnership with Showing Time? And those are decisions that will be made by your thoughtful board of directors. And I'm gonna tell you my job is to give them every single piece of information that I can possibly give them and give them all the options for them to make a well-informed, educated decision about the current and future partnerships that we as an MLS have and will have. And at the end of the day, all that we're about is best serving you. And so we will always try to find the best solution that gives you the best whatever, whether it be a mobile application or a showing platform that you schedule your showings on, that we're giving you the best technology that gives you the easiest, most seamless you know, ability to serve your clients. That's where our focus is and that's where it will stay. Um, it will always remain there. So I wanted to make sure that you guys, uh, just because we're not saying anything, doesn't mean that there are is there's not a ton of work. We did send out an email assuring everyone that due diligence is is happening. That we are we're plugged in. I am so plugged into this industry that I say, you know, my husband thinks that I, you know, am I like he says, hello, Nicole, get off your phone. So, <laughs> so just trust me that we are on it and we are um, doing all of the good things to make sure that we have the best solutions for you, our members. All right, um, we're running out of time. So clear cooperation, I just wanted to mention it because I know that it's been around for a year now um, and there will be, a, there might be, very likely be a few changes that are gonna come to clear cooperation to continue to provide that, that clarity of marketplace. And the one thing I will say that it's sort of my soapbox item is that with clear cooperation, I want you to all approach it um, with, the, with a eye towards fair housing. And it's not talked about enough about the fact that if we don't allow all prospective home buyers to access and to view our properties, our listed properties, um, that is not of service to all, all prospective home buyers. And we always want to be mindful that there are, you know, protected classes and underserved communities that might not have the same um, ability to access certain things, and we never want to be the reason for that. And so clear cooperation is not about anything. It, it's about a lot of things. It's about clarity in the marketplace, but I think that the that the focus needs to be on providing that that same access to those listings. If you put it as a coming soon, 
and that house goes under contract the day before it goes active or the day it goes active, then how can you assure me that every home buyer was able to see that listing? And was it really the best? Could you have gotten more? Could if it would if it would have been actually opened up to the consumer to all of the platforms and let everybody in to see it? You never know what could have happened. So just be mindful and remember the spirit of clear cooperation is a transparent marketplace for all prospective home buyers, which is ultimately best for sellers. All right, we're almost done. Quick mention on this. We have a lot of people commenting, why aren't you opening up? Why aren't you opening up? Let's get together. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, this is why we're being counseled from NAR and Florida Realtors that we are not at the end of this pandemic. We have, we're coming a long way. I'm so thankful for everybody who's been able to be vaccinated, but people like me that are middle aged that are not over the, a certain age, I still can't be. Um, and we're trying to provide all the services we can to you that we are, we're upping our any on webinars just like today. Um, and so we will open up. Glenn and I are in constant communication and he is so tuned in with Florida Realtors and all of their warnings, but we need to stay the course. And you all should visit this for your businesses as well. They have, Florida Realtors has some amazing resources. So please just go take a look and make sure that you make informed decisions because I feel like we're getting a little fatigued like we're at the you know it's like come on it's been a year already but we have to stay the course for the ultimate safety of our staff and in the meantime we are trying to do so many things virtually that we, we, we want you to feel almost overwhelmed by our offerings all right and then um, this is my personal ask and it has nothing to do with mls but i just completed all three of these things and i want each one of you to consider doing the same we're in a moment of time that that knowledge is power. And these three modules, the Fair Haven um, Fair Housing Simulation, the At Home with Diversity course, and then the Bias Override video from NAR, um, these are game changers. And I and we I call you all to take just take the time to do these. They're offering at home with diversity at a discount. I just completed the course and it was life changing. It makes your perspective changes, it, it opens your mind. And the fair housing simulation, that fair haven is kind of fun. It actually takes you through like helping a buyer in a, in a, a you know, virtual community. Um, and then the bias override is really about that implicit bias, that we all have bias and it's just the knowledge of recognizing that and being aware that we all have bias and making ourselves be thoughtful about those biases that we are all it's just who we are who we were raised as but we can do better as realtors and this is a challenge that nar has put out and i i could not be more supportive of it and so i just wanted to bring it up briefly so that's it i'm nine minutes over jeremy i thought i could do it in 30 i was wrong um any other questions in the chat that the lovely voice online with us is jeremy he's so great to be my my wizard behind the curtain or do we have anything else that anybody would like to ask me i just want to thank each of you i mean i know your time is precious so thank you for spending 40 minutes with me um we're going to try to do these quarterly and i assure you they'll be shorter because i won't have six plus months of content to provide you um, but please use our services be um you know everything that we do is for you i i live and breathe this industry and i'm always available my cell phone is on this slide put it in your phone um, if you just as long as you're respectful and don't call me at midnight, I might not answer. But um, and there's my email, Nicole at realmls.com. And I appreciate everybody and stay well, stay safe and go sell some real estate. Right. Thank you, everyone.